It's very windy today, so I decided to go ahead and put together the Kebab Toothpick 3. And uh, this is going to be a abbreviated build video and flight. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just show you what the frame looks like assembled. Installed the 1204 RC in power motors. So for the Toothpick 3, I'm using the Beta FPV F4 AOI 12 amp brushless flight controller and ESC. It's the kebab version where he uh, gave them input on the pin layout. And so what's nice about this, it has both connectors, as you can see here, if you wanted to plug in wires directly from motors that had a connector, or you can go ahead and solder it to the pads. I would warn you that the pad uh, width is fairly narrow, so you definitely want to use a finer tipped uh, soldering iron here. But uh, overall, uh, I was pretty impressed with the board layout on this. And so next, I'm going to be um, connecting up the XM Plus receiver. And I got a request to uh, show how that's done. So next, we're going to program the XM Plus to make sure that the RSSI is on AUX 12 or channel 16. And you just need a standard servo cable. And as you can see, um, the header that this thing comes with, I, I just like just pushing it through um, the through hole uh, without it being soldered in. And then if you notice it's ground, then five volts, and then on the top there is S bus. But on the other end, and if you're gonna be programming this with a Tyrannus, you need to swap the power and ground leads and you do that by just lifting up the tab here on the connector i just use a i just use an exacto blade lift that up and then pull the the uh, connector pin out on both uh, power and ground and then just swap the two and that way you can plug it into your tyrannus and i'll show you how you do that next so i removed the cover off my auxiliary bay for my uh, tyrannus x90 plus and I'm just going to use this servo lead and the yellow wire or the S bus wire goes at the bottom as you can see here so you just push that on and now we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the menu to program the XM plus. So I turned on the Tyrannus and now what you're going to do is long press menu and then you're going to hit page and then you're going to scroll down to firmware directory. That's where you loaded the binary file for the XM Plus. You're going to hit enter. And then I have a bunch of other files in here, so ignore those. So I'm going to scroll down to XM Plus. I'm in the US, so I use the FCC version. This is the date it was released. And I'm using RSSI on channel 16. So you're going to hit enter and then it should come up with flash external module and then what I'm going to do is select that and hit enter and then your XM plus here will start programming and you'll see that the, the light is flashing here as it's programming. And then when it's done writing, then you can go ahead and solder it up. I would do this, you know, a lot of these don't come with RSSI program to the aux channel that you want. So I always just do this by uh, default and uh, just to ensure I don't want to solder something on and, and not have RSSI in the OSD. Okay, now it's complete. So wiring up the XM Plus is uh, very easy. There's only three wires. The top here is S bus, followed by five volts, followed by ground. And that's gonna go over to the flight controller S bus pad, which is the second to the top, followed by five volts and then ground. So just as an aside, 
Uh, as you start doing lots of builds, you end up uh, getting scrap pieces of silicon wire. I save all those. It's not like you're being a hoarder or anything, but they come in very useful when you're uh, soldering up like the XM Plus. So, you know, always save, save your wires as you're trimming off the ends uh, for a wire harness. Another quick tip, I like uh, twisting up the wires. It makes a cleaner build and actually a little stronger because it's uh, twisted together, the wire leads. So now that I have my XM Plus bound to my Tyrannus transmitter, I went ahead and put some shrink tubing on it. Uh, that's pretty common practice when you're doing a build. So another quick tip, I just use blue tack linked below, or I use, you know, little helping hands here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tin the leads on the wires. So the wires are all tinned. Okay, I have the XM Plus soldered up with the wires here. Ground, five volts, and S bus at the top. So now I'm gonna go ahead and solder it up to the flight controller. So one thing you always wanna do is tin up your pads on the flight controller. As you can see, I tinned S bus, five volts, and ground. This is what it looks like soldered up. Yeah, it's pretty tight soldering here. So again, use a fine tipped soldering iron. So I just completed soldering up the VTX wire harness. The green wire is the smart audio coming off the VTX, which is uh, connected to the UART-1 of the Betaflight flight controller. The next wire here is ground, which is the black wire. And then the red wire is five volts. And then we have the blue wire here going to the VTX output of the flight controller. And then the yellow wire is the camera in on the flight controller. So just make sure that you have these uh, correctly soldered on. If you get these two swapped, you won't get a, an image in uh, when you're uh, looking at your, your video feed. The other thing I would suggest to make sure that you have everything hooked up, you can buy these, you know, cheap little monitor. Let me put that into focus here. And I'll link it below. They're very useful when you're setting up quads. They're small. You can fit them in your backpack. And so I like these for when I'm doing builds. So moving on to the Cadex EOS 2. Uh, the wire harness that attaches to the camera. You're going to have to splice that together with the, the camera leads. So um, that's what I did here. So the last of the soldering that uh, I needed to get done was attach the buzzer. So the red wire goes to buzzer plus and of course the black wire goes to buzzer minus pad on the flight controller. I, you know, on these small toothpick type quads, they're really easy to get lost in grass and in the field. So I highly recommend putting a buzzer on. I mean, yeah, you can use the motors um, and use D-Shot commands to buzz the motors, but it's just not loud enough in my uh, experience. So I think it's worth the extra weight to put on a buzzer. Let's make sure the buzzer's working. Before I put the canopy on, I just wanted to show you what it looked like fully assembled. Here's the buzzer. And here's the receiver sitting in here. I went ahead and used this uh, dipole antenna because it fits fairly easily through the canopy. I went ahead and tie wrapped down the battery lead and then also the XM Plus antenna wires here. Cool, this is what the finished product looks like with the canopy on and the EOS 2 camera installed. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish setting things up in Betaflight and take it for a maiden. Okay, let's close out this toothpick build video. First, the weight of the build. It's coming in at 72 grams. As compared to the, just as an example, the closest quad I have is a GTB, or the Diatone GTB339. And it, interestingly enough, comes out at uh, 72 grams 
all up weight without a battery. So they're identical weight. It's pretty interesting they came out to be the same weight. Um, with a battery, um, 72 grams, if you add a 450 mAh um, 2S battery, um, it's coming in at 100 grams, which is a very reasonable weight for this build. Uh, I also was flying with these uh, 350 mAh 3S batteries, which are equivalent weight as well. Um, it's coming in at about 100 grams also. With Betaflight 4.1 loaded on it, and slide adjustments to the default PIDs. Uh, this quad really flies straight like a laser as Kebab describes in his video. I think it flies even better than the GTB339 which is an excellent craft and which I also uh, thoroughly enjoy flying. I do prefer this uh, X-Style frame design over the GTB339 cube frame. I think the thick arm should hold up well in a crash I did manage to keep it in the air, which is probably a testament on how well it flies. I uh, do like flying uh, the 3S better than the 2S on this quad. It's just that I tend to fly in more open parks, and on big power loops, I like the extra throttle punch to get out of trouble, um, which I tend to get into a lot. Also, the fly times are reasonable. Even though it was uh, 25 degrees Fahrenheit when I was flying it, um, I was getting uh, three minutes with the 350 mAh batteries and about four minutes uh, with these GNB uh, 2S batteries, which are one of my favorite uh, 2S batteries. Also, I was very impressed with the props that uh, Kebab came out for the Toothpick 3. Um, it was a lot quieter than the props that are on the Diatone uh, GTB. Uh, 339. In fact, I think I might swap out uh, and start using these props for it as well because it was uh, less noisy. Uh, the only negative I have on this frame is there's not much surface area uh, to put on a battery pad. I'm sure Kebab would say a battery pad just adds weight, but I'm an average pilot unlike Kebab and the likelihood of a crash and ejecting the battery are a lot higher, a lot higher with me at the sticks. So, um, in conclusion, I highly recommend this build. And, uh, you know, I need to fly it some more. One thing I did have problems with, I uh, had an extra EOS 2 uh, camera laying around and it did have some contamination um, on it, so on the sensor. So I had to take it apart and I got it cleaned off, but um, the uh, the, Focus, I still need to play around with the focus. So I decided just to go ahead and order a Runcam Nano 2. I just like the color better on it and I think it's a better camera than the EOS 2. So I'll probably be swapping out the camera. Uh, so I'll show you a maiden flight on 2S and followed by a 3S flight the next day. And again, please ignore the out of focus issue with the camera. And uh, as always, Thanks for watching my channel.